Now, it's an issue that affects one in 50 people. Body dysmorphia is a mental health condition where you're constantly worrying about your appearance. And it's something my next guest, former TOWIE star Charlie King, has dealt with for years. Uh, unhappy with his looks, he underwent an invasive and expensive nose operation. And last year, he's been under the knife again for more corrective surgery. Well, now, Charlie wants to help more men deal with body confidence and is with us now. Well, it's lovely to see you, Charlie. How are you, you doing? We're doing all right. It's been, um, it's been quite a tough time, to be honest. This last, I say four years, especially. It, yeah. it all came to a head and it all spiralled out of control. And um, I'm now just coming through. I can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I'm addressing a lot of things and I'm working through it and it's continual work in progress. Yeah. But to be able to sit here now comfortably and talk about it and shed light on the subject from a male point of view, especially, yeah. um, I think is really important. So, so tell us how it started. And then you say, you know, particularly these last four years, what, what's been happening? I mean, if I, if I really look at the bigger picture, it started at school. I was bullied terribly at school and it definitely affected me. And I realise that now as I'm in my mid-30s. So that was definitely a starting block where I always felt a little bit um, the odd one out or not very confident within myself. Yeah. And then if we fast forward it to the days of me coming on TOWIE, obviously on the show I was struggling with myself within the sexuality side of things. Um, yeah. So anyone that you know, might know me knows that I came out quite later when I was 29, 30. Um, and that show was very image based. Yeah. You know, we were like the Instagram before Instagram kind of thing, if you like. It was all about good bodies, you yeah. know, the girls look great, whatever. And so there was always a pressure there. And then when I came out, there was this pressure to, uh, to look the way I, I thought I needed to look to be attractive to men and to also get over my fear that being gay meant I lacked masculinity. So I went and got the tattoos and I bulked up and I, I kind of went down this route of thinking that's what I needed to do to yeah. be seen as a man still and attractive. Do you, yeah. do you think that social media then played a massive part? A massive part as well, yeah, for sure. I think over the course of these last few years, we're constantly absorbing things and we're always looking at people and you can't help but start thinking, do I need to look like that or is this... Is, is this what it is deemed to be seen as attractive? Um, what can I do to make myself look like this or be popular or get the likes or get the endorsements or whatever yeah. it is you want to do? Um, and it becomes exhausting. And, and it got to a point, didn't it, where you were so unhappy with how you looked, you then were getting surgery. And... So that, that's been the, the game changer for me. Is that I always thought that I'm quite a focused person. I like to work hard on things and my body is something that I like to work on for my own mental well-being. Yeah. It's not just about the aesthetics, it's more about I enjoy exercise, I love keeping fit for me, I work in the fitness industry, I love seeing people reach their goals and yeah. it's a really important thing in life, I believe. But when it comes to, um, sorry I've lost my train of thought there. About the surgery, so when it so comes to... When it came to that, I, I came out of a relationship four years ago first love again later in life um broken hearted felt absolutely flawed and you go on that comeback attitude don't you like i'm gonna show this person that yeah. i'm gonna come back bigger better stronger sexier than ever before if you like and i went to a dermatologist's in london and i said oh being in harley street which is plastic surgery central isn't yeah. it yeah oh if i could change anything it would be my nose and they said, well, you know, you don't need a nose job for that. You could have some filler put in your nose because you've got the dent. They could see a dent from when it had been broken yeah. by a friend of mine. I think we can see the before and after yeah. pictures of it. it so so that, that blew. So they put filler in my nose and it was an absolute disaster, you can see. Yeah. So I had to walk around with that for a while until it got dissolved. And did that impact you more? It hadn't oh. turned out how you wanted, so well, then you were... it's your face, isn't yeah, it? And I yeah. was looking at myself mm. thinking, what have I done? And, and then from there, I had to get it dissolved. And that cost thousands to get it done. And then the nose didn't return back to what it was. So even though I already had a slight complex with it, the, the, the filler made me even more focused on it. And did people notice it and say things to you as well? Well, what happened was with that, I started to retract back because I was like, I don't want to be seen. Until this is all dissolved and sorted, I don't want to be seen. So my confidence started chipping away again and I started holding back. And then you got surgery to try and 
corrected again then? So a couple of months later, this is before any surgery, I, I moved back to London to try and rebuild my life, um, try and get my confidence back a little bit, put the filler episode behind me, yeah. and then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, I obviously we were all put in our houses, we are all just locked in. You start looking at the social media and there was also part of me that wanted to give my followers content and every time I'd look at myself, I'd start being very negative about myself. And it, but ironically, there was probably loads of people looking at you thinking, I want to look like him. The, and the, this is, it's like a this vicious was the circle. Thing. Absolutely that. And so I could put a picture out for that validation and get all the likes and the, the emojis and all that sort of stuff. But really, it didn't, didn't do anything for me. So then when we got out of that first lockdown, I went to see a plastic surgeon who um, agreed that an improvement could be made. So when you hear that and you're already in a vulnerable place um, and self-conscious, I was yeah. like, sign me up, get me in, I'm going to have this surgery. And I had surgery number one. And um, very quickly after having it, I could see that it wasn't right. Yeah. The surgery then, didn't go to plan. And you, you were on the show with us in, in the middle of all this, weren't you? And yeah, I came uh, in the early part of the summer, didn't I? And yeah. that was hard for me because if I, I can't really watch that clip back because I can see the, the problems with but, it. Uh, interesting about that, I never noticed anything. It's, it's really? so interesting that... And this is part of the problem with body dysmorphia. Yeah. It's what you see yourself. Don't like, see you know, you come in, you're like, oh, good looking lad, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You're not, didn't notice anything about your no, nose. No, I just so see just... a handsome man. Yeah. yeah. Always have done. But that's... Since you started on Towie, I've always thought you just look beautiful. And that's the point, isn't it? It's not about what we all think. It's actually about you. And that is what body dysmorphia is. And that's what you're getting help for, isn't it? Is how to yeah. get that self-confidence, that self-love yeah. back. I'm finding that um, it's it's a very draining thing when you can't see what people tell you. Yeah. And I'm tired of it. And I'm at this point in my life where I'm 37 soon. Yeah. And I can't keep living in this cycle of not liking myself or being negative about myself when people come to me for inspiration and I want to try and be happy. Yeah, and it's just been a constant flow of of bad things happening and I want to take control. And this is why I wanted to sit here today and just say like enough now, like I don't care about perfection. I don't want people to be in quest of this perfection. I want us to, if you're finding yourself sitting there daily, picking yourself apart or you're obsessing or comparing yourself, start getting some help and listen yeah. to the ones that say you, you, you're okay, you're fine. Like you're, you're handsome, you're lovely. There's nothing wrong because it's important to listen to those people. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and I'm, I'm just gonna, I just want to say, I think it's amazing that you're talking about this because I have got a couple of male friends who think in the same way as you do. And I get so frustrated because what I look at, I see my friends and they're beautiful people inside and out. And I, I've never really been able to understand it. The fact that you talk about it like this is going to mean so much for so many people watching. I hope so. It really will. Really yeah, and you, so. and you are getting help. It's important people know that. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm getting help. So I get, it is, it's an emotional subject, truthfully, course, and it it's been a lot. Um, I'm getting help. I've got a great support network and I have therapy. And as part of this, it will be an ongoing thing because you can't just magic a wand and be like, I feel great now or whatever. The surgery, I had to have another surgery because surgery one went wrong. Unfortunately, the scarring, the scar tissue caused a, a twist in my nose and it all went asymmetric. So I had to wait a year to get it fixed. And I'm now three months post the revision and they've used my ear cartilage to rebuild the tip. And it seems to be, please God, holding out yeah. And it's an ongoing thing. And my surgeon's been supportive and amazing, I have to say yeah. that. But therapy helps me to look at the bigger picture because it isn't just one thing. Yeah. And if, sorry. And there's, uh, no, I was just going to say, and there's lots of people out there like you. And I think that's the key to this. There's probably people watching this now who feel very similar. So I'm just going to bring in a doctor um, yeah. as well. We've got Dr. Rob Wilson here. And, and doctor, can you just explain a bit about what body dysmorphia is for people who might be trying to work out whether it's something they have? Hi there, thank you so much for uh, bringing attention and awareness to this really uh, misunderstood and neglected problem. Um, I'm the chair of a charity called the Body Dysmorphic Disorder Foundation, um, and we're the only charity in the world for this condition. BDD is a problem in which people are preoccupied with their appearance, uh, and it's usually on their mind for several hours a day, and it's causing great 
deals of distress and shame and anxiety and depression. And it usually involves various behaviours like checking the mirrors, reassurance seeking, uh, maybe searching uh, various different cosmetic procedures, and really does drive people to very great lengths in terms of trying to conceal their appearance or sometimes trying to improve it in some way and can even have uh, very high rates of suicide. Mm -hmm. And can, where can people get help then? Well, first port of call, uh, we'd really encourage people to come to our website at the BDD Foundation, um, which is bddfoundation.org. Um, and you can gain quite a lot of information there on the nature of the problem, the kinds of treatments that are available, uh, for specialists, uh, how to access specialist cognitive behaviour therapy, and maybe talking to your GP about getting some treatment and possibly trying some high dose uh, SSRI type antidepressants. Can I ask as well, because there might also be people watching who's got a family member or a friend who they think might have this, so how can they approach this to, to help them? Yeah, that's a really, really key question, because oftentimes the, the person with BDD will think they've got an appearance problem, so they don't really think they've got anything psychological wrong with them. So it's very often it's the, the, the friends, the family members, the parents and so on who are first aware there may be something emotionally wrong. So the, one of the key things is just to say, look, I've noticed that, you know, you've been spending a lot of time talking about or thinking about your appearance lately. Um, you seem like you're very distressed about it. Is that, is that a problem for you? Have you noticed if there's something, is it on your mind? Is it feeling into you like it's maybe on your mind a little too much? It's causing you a little bit too much distress. Um, should, do you want to talk about that? Do you think we should think about maybe we get a little bit of extra help and support? And it's even worth um, friends and relatives and, and, and so on having a look at the BDD Foundation website. They can gain a lot of information there. Yeah. Um, and maybe even then help to introduce the sufferer to just one or two um, stories of other people that have had the problem. Just gently introduce them to the concept. Yeah. Um, Doctor, thank you very much for your time. Charlie, I should ask you as well what your thoughts are on advice for people out there watching this who might have a family member or a friend or even themselves. Yeah, I mean, I feel the doctor's touched on some of the main points there. From, from my perspective and kind of like my channel, I think it's also very important to look at how much you're looking at social media, yeah. who you follow. Don't be afraid to unfollow people or things that might make you start doubting yourself. I think if you're finding yourself being quite negative towards yourself or staring at the mirror, you need to start thinking about why and almost, almost trying to turn it around. Like within my therapy, I, I try it with these positive affirmations and I try and limit myself now and I try and hold my head up high because you sometimes have to fight through it. If you're in a bit of a negative headspace, you need yeah. to go, hang on a minute, no, you're not going to get me today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push through. And I try and do things that distract me. I love music, music, music lyrics, things like that really help me. Yeah. So they're the kind of things that I do within myself. And also I, I tell anyone that might be just feeling a bit down to do in general. Yeah. Oh, well, Charlie, thank you so much for talking oh, about it. Thank you very much. There will be a lot of people who get a lot of support just from you, you know, being open about it. And Dr. Rob Wilson, thank you for your time as well. All those details you talked about there, we will make sure we put on our uh, website as well. If you just go to channelfort.com forward slash support, all the details will be there. Lots more still to come on the show. We'll see you after the break.